guys. Here I have another machine from the 1980s. It's a home light 330 chainsaw and I was given this by a friend who no longer wanted it or needed it. Um, it's got a few issues that I'm going to be looking at in this video to hopefully get this chainsaw running again. So let's take a closer look, see what we've got here. It's a relatively heavy machine. Um, it's got lots of metal components around it, but it's quite robust, feels of a good quality. Underneath this top cover, we can see that it could do with a new filter. Probably won't be able to find one of these, but I'm sure I can find something to fit in there, a piece of sponge. Um, it has this lever on the top cover that's to operate a choke plate. You can probably buy a choke plate for this, but what's the fun in that? I'm going to try and make one. Turns out you can buy them on eBay. This is a second-hand broker one, and it's £21, including shipping from the US. So I think it's best if I just try and make one. And then the carb simply lifts out. So, now I've previously had this carburetor off to clean it. I put new gaskets in it and a new diaphragm. Um, so it's all clean and ready to go back in. Using a small piece of paper and a soft pencil, I quickly sketched over the carburetor to get the shape, which I can then later transfer onto metal. Using a washer, I traced around the inlet hole and the bolt hole. This will give me a rough template for making the choke plate. it all up so there's no burrs on the back that are going to scratch the top of this. That will sit in there. Made the hole slightly bigger and I'm going to put a little spring washer in this gap here so the plate can turn freely. Now I know it's not the prettiest but as long as it functions as a choke plate I'm not too worried. take everything off of it. There's clearly something something more wrong with it. Um, it started off flooding and then I wasn't getting enough fuel so I've stripped it back and I want to see exactly what's going on and I found a few things wrong with it so let's have a look. This here is the inlet boot from the carburetor and as you can see well, there's nothing left of it really. Um, these parts are very expensive, come from America. I think I was looking at about 25 to 30 pounds just for one of these things, because it's an old saw. So again, I don't want to spend that on this saw. It's probably not really worth it. So <clears throat> I've just knocked up something that will work as a, an inlet boot here. I've got some rubber grommets um, which cables run through and I've just super glued those together and uh, cut some more rubber for the bottom of the boot. Also I have perished fuel lines so I've ordered some new fuel lines for this chainsaw just to make sure that there was a right inside diameter there. The fuel filter had come off inside the tank so it was sucking in dirty fuel to the carb well it was, it was sucking in bits to the carb and I think that was probably causing the flooding issues and then the fuel starvation problems that I was getting with my carburetor. So I stripped that apart again, cleaned it out and it did have sediments in there. The needle valve wasn't um, opening and closing properly because it had bits around it. So hopefully once I've done all these things we can get it to run. 
Now you're probably asking yourself, is it actually worth it, me fixing this saw up? Well, probably not. I'm probably wasting my time, but um, I've invested this much time in it now, so I want to see it through and get it running. If I see another one of these saws, though, I will be throwing it in the skip. I mean, they're really difficult to work on um, in the sense that everything has to go together in a very specific order um, and it all fits together and it's a bit like Tetris trying to get it to all slot back together and take it apart. Here's the rubber boot that I made. It's got new fuel lines on it. This reed valve's been all cleaned out in here. It's all been cleaned around here. So I think I'm ready to start putting it back together now. Here I reconnect the oil lines. It has a small oil pump which sits on top of the chainsaw. This is a fuel filter that came off inside the tank and I reconnected this to the new fuel line. tip for getting the fuel lines on if you just dip it in a bit of boiling hot water it makes it much more pliable and easier to get onto the whatever you're putting on so it's all back together now I'm just going to adjust the carburetor here what I'm going to do is wind them all in all the way until they stop don't force them okay, let's stop there the high all the way in stopped and the low all the way in until it stops and then I'm just going to back them all out two turns so that's half that's one one and a half, that's two. I'm just going to take the chain off while I'm tuning it um, so it's safe. We don't want this really spinning around. And then I'll put it back on afterwards once we've got it running just to tune that high and low speed settings on the carb.
by no means an expert in tuning chainsaws but I'm going to adjust the idle screw and the low speed screw settings just so that I get a good throttle response and that the chain's not spinning while it's idling. For adjusting the high speed screw settings you should use a tachometer to get the right engine RPM. If you don't use one of these you could end up blowing your chainsaw off. Since making this video I have ordered a tachometer and will hopefully be using this in future videos. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get regular updates on new videos, um, I'm hoping to be posting a new video every week so stay tuned for that. Until next time feel free to check out some of my other videos, thank you.